And of course, the big story that continues to form the backdrop of every news agenda each day at the moment is the ongoing situation in Ukraine. The latest reports suggest that Russia has launched further attacks despite suggesting a route to peace might be possible. The UN now reports that more than 4 million people have fled. 4 million people have fled the war-torn country, but what is it like for those who are left behind? Let's speak now uh, with Sergei Sivkach, who's executive director at Ukraine Invest, who's in and from, from Kiev. Uh, listen, good afternoon to you, Sergei. Hi. Hello, good to hear you. And nice to have you with us as well. Um, so we heard this, we had this sort of almost a bit of what appeared to be good news or goodish news that th there could be a peace process a breaking point in the peace process where things were looking good. What is your understanding of of where that situation is now? We heard the news and uh, we thought, well, as the people of Ukraine, we thought this a positive news. At the same time, we can still, still see attacks of, on Ukraine. Uh, our president said yesterday that on average, 40 missiles hit Ukraine on a daily basis. Wow. So it's far from peace. And we just hope yeah. that Russia will, you know, come to some conclusion. You know, they have to understand that this is not a war. This is not a special operation. Sure. This is this is a war. This is not a special operation, as they call it. And this this is genocide. You know, they have taken by force more than 2,000 kids from Ukraine to Russia in order to pan manipulate, you know, and to do some PR campaign. You know, just civilians are killed and they hit civilian infrastructure uh, as well. This is... Yeah. You know, so the, the, these well, are unequivocally, these are war crimes, it is genocide you're calling it. And, you know, it again, again the, 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 the other story that we heard, which, which may not be true, is that Kiev was going to be um, uh, uh, let to one side for a second in terms of the Russian um, invasion, that they would take their foot off the gas and not be shelling uh, Kiev. What's the, what's the truth there? This is what they said yesterday. I think Deputy of the uh, Minister of Defence of uh, Russia said this yesterday. But we have seen uh, missile attacks on Kiev uh, yesterday again. And on Chernihiv as well, because they said that they will pull back from Kiev region and Chernihiv region. Uh, UK Intel says that they will probably pull back, but just in order to relocate. Mm -hmm. So we need to see because, you know, it's very hard to trust Russians when it yeah. comes to any agreements. Yeah. And we shouldn't be thanking Russia for not bombing parts of Ukraine. I mean, that's you know, the, the reality is, this is that yes. th this is this is if, if it's not going on in one city, it's going on in another city. Uh, what sort of help, uh, Sergei, do you sense is still needed? Because there's been this huge international effort. Uh, you know, most countries, most Western countries, have been have stepped up to the plate and said, "Look, you know, we are we are here to help in whatever way we can." We had a you know concert for Ukraine uh, last night in the UK. The, the fundraising, the allowing people, inviting people to come to homes throughout this country and throughout Europe as well. What more do you sense as a Ukrainian, as a citizen, as a man in Kiev? What needs to be done? Well, thank you very much for concerts and for fundraising, but what we need today, we need some very strong sanctions on Russia. Uh, let's talk about sanctions, for example. Only seven banks, if I'm not mistaken, were disconnected from SWIFT by EU uh, sanctions. Mm -hmm. And in Russia, there are more than 300 bank banks, if I'm not mistaken again. So it's not a full-fledged sanction on Russia. Then, talking about sanction again, EU pays to Russia on a daily basis about 1.1 billion US dollars for energy, for oil, for gas, you know, for all sure. the energy supplies. So all this money are used by them in order to produce weapons as well. Yeah. So what we want to see, we want to see some real hard sanctions right now. Also, very important to support Ukraine. Our Negotiators yesterday, they met with uh, Russian team in uh, Turkey. And uh, what Ukrainian side says is that there will be no agreement until Russians would pull back to positions that they 
held on the 23rd of February, so the day before war started in Ukraine. Also, uh, in order to have that agreement in place, we want to see some clear and you know transparent and predictable support from international partners and from countries that form Security Council of United Nations. We want to have agreement that will promise neutral status of Ukraine, but at the same time protection of Ukraine in case if, if Ukraine will be ever invaded again. Thank you very much, by the way, to United Kingdom for coming forward and to saying that UK is happy to confirm that type of protection to Ukraine. This was stated by your representative in the United Nations. So um, we want to see same statement from other UN Security Council countries. Yeah. And also we want to see, you know, solid position of European Union because Budapest, for example, uh, they always make an excuses in order to stop EU sanctions against Russia. And we want to see European family being as one team and with, yeah. with a single voice in relation to this aggression. Well, we, we certainly hope that it, the, the, the sanctions that you refer to um, are implemented in, in a more robust way. Sergei, thank you for your time. Um, stay safe. We wish you lots of luck. That's Sergei Sivkatsch, who is the Exec Director at Ukraine Invest, live in Kiev this afternoon.